once again, the time of year where the spirit of Halloween has been bestowed upon us. The time to engulf your home in a seasonal flare, listen to your favorite horror narrator's marathons of narrations, and of course, sit down in front of the TV to take in a classic horror movie. Whether you love or hate them, you have to admit that their grisly presentations of killers, beasts, and gruesome scenarios do help set the terror-filled tone that the event places on society. Regardless of where you stand on the ethics of these movies, the better part of us can agree that they were only created with the intentions of only entertainment. Though, as we have seen in the past three episodes of this series, there will always be exceptions that will remove all innocence even the simplest of life's joys can provide us. Tonight, we shall look at three different horror classics that provided inspiration for the crimes and murders by individuals who couldn't comprehend the term, it's only a movie. Wes Craven's 1996 award-winning film, Scream, is considered by both fans and critics as the pinnacle foundation of what a traditional American slasher flick should be based upon. In the 20 years following its initial release, the franchise has grown immensely, with three sequels, two re-releases, and gaining quite the cult following. While there are many words you could use to describe the film and its success, inspiring is probably not one of them. Well, at least not to most. It is unfortunate to say that during the movie's life cycle, it has inspired a number of copycat murders alongside the growth of its franchise. One such incident would strike a great amount of fear in the hearts of the residents in the small French-speaking area of Belgium. In the fall of 2001, Gerpine's resident Alison Cambier decided to pay a visit to her neighbor, 24-year-old Thierry Yarden, to swap movies and have a chat. Supposedly, the two shared a friendly relationship with each other, and it is not exactly known what happened during this visit that made Yarden wish to take the conversation to a more inappropriate direction and force some extensive sexual advances towards the 15-year-old schoolgirl. Seemingly enraged by the constant rejection to his intimate desires, Yarden briefly excused himself from the situation and entered a nearby room where he proceeded to don the iconic black tunic and ghost face mask of the killer seen in the movies, as well as withdrawing two kitchen knives. What happened next would be a series of events that only minds of the sickest could comprehend and place action behind. Yarden proceeded to rush the girl slapping a hand over her mouth to prevent screaming and started to stab her with the blades 30 times, ripping her entire left side of her torso open in the process. As soon as Cambier took her final breath, the costumed killer scooped up her mutilated body and lowered her onto his bed, placing a singular rose 
in one of her lifeless hands. Yarden then picked up his phone and proceeded to call his father and a colleague at work to confess to his crime. When questioned by police, Yarden admitted that his crime was entirely planned and in fact completely inspired by the Scream trilogy. What makes his crime even more shocking and spontaneous was the fact that he had no history that would suggest that he was capable of such an act, not having any criminal history or psychological concerns, making this his first and only criminal offense to this day. Twisted Pictures Saw franchise certainly put their own twist on the bloodbath gore spree genre of horror. Rather than having the traditional murderer slaughter an entire cast of characters for psychopathic, bloodthirsty means, Saw anti-hero Jigsaw tries to use his morbid ingenuity to create rehabilitation for his victims attempting to set their lives on course for a better future. The usual targets for Jigsaw are typically people who have given up on their lives and either waste them away through drug and alcohol use or wish to end them entirely. The victim will most often awaken in a chamber rigged to a homemade device designed solely for the purpose of ending their miserable lives in the most brutal fashion possible. But the game, as Jigsaw comes to call it, does allow the victim to have the chance to free themselves and live, if they are willing to subject themselves to physical or psychological torture. Clearly, if they push themselves through the torment, they must believe on some level that their life is still worth something. Questionable motives or not, murder is still murder, and no human being should be the arbiter of when a person's lifetime is up, though some still seem to want to use it as an excuse for carrying out their sins. Not too much information is given on this incident, but in Tennessee, two teenage girls who were fans of the Saw series wanted to try and have a little bit of fun with what they learned during their watching period. Randomly selecting a number out of the phone book, the girls called a random stranger, and in a Jigsaw-esque tone, they told the 52-year-old woman who answered the phone that a friend of hers had been kidnapped by them and was being held in the woman's house, which was armed with canisters of poison gas, which would release their contents throughout the estate within a matter of minutes. If she wanted to see her friend again alive, she would have to risk her life by entering the home and escorting her friend to safety before the gas was released. In a panicked and terrified state, the woman who received the call actually suffered from a stroke and collapsed on sight. It was later revealed that the reasoning behind her extreme and life-threatening reaction was chalked to a mixture between the shock from the phone call and being in an already fragile emotional state as she took the call while attending a funeral for a loved one. The call was traced back by police to the girls and were brought in for questioning and they revealed that they had no intentions of causing harm to anyone and it was only a prank that admittedly went horribly wrong. Thankfully, the woman who took the call made a full recovery from her stroke and the two girls were charged with mischief. However, this is not the only case of people trying to become their own little jigsaws. The next incident we will discuss had absolutely no innocence behind it. 
A Salt Lake City mother had no choice but to hand over her 14-year-old son and 15-year-old friend to police when she discovered that what seemed like a made-up fantasy was an actual in-depth plan to kidnap a number of people and subject them to recorded torture, similar to what would be seen in a Saw movie. Unlike in the previous case where the motive was only the spirit of… fun, the boys revealed to police during questioning that they had full intent to carry out with their plans, having tracked down an isolated location and already picked their victims, two girls from their school as well as a police officer, all deemed as subjects who harm others and were in need of being taught a lesson. At the time of this recording, I was unable to find any information on what happened to the boys after their confession during my research, but I think we can all assume that they were the ones who received a lesson. There is no definitive answer as to what pushes one's mind when they make the decision to take someone's life. But out of love and protection are rarely given reasons as to what fuels this action. Not saying that it hasn't happened before. During his high school career, Jamie Evans started to form a great distaste towards the people he was surrounded with, stating that members of society, primarily teenagers in his grade, are quite often cruel and heartless to others around him. To him, they were full of themselves and the holders of the real evil found in this world. Even at home, Evans was unable to escape his inner wrath of classmates, as to him, even his own family was falling down the path he deemed as irredeemable. Loving his family too much to see them go any further and wanting to protect them from becoming truly evil, Evans decided that they needed to die in order to be saved. In the middle of the night, on October 3rd, 2012, Evans swiped the gun of the house and proceeded to execute his mother and younger sister. After confirming that the two were dead, Evans placed the gun on the kitchen counter and called the police to confess to what he had done. What you are about to hear is the actual recording of the phone call Evans made to Alido police. What makes this truly disturbing is the calm and seemingly unaffected tone of voice Evans has as he tells the operator the details of the murder. Ponsor County 911, where is your emergency? Uh, my house. What's the address? One. Okay, what's the emergency? Uh, I just killed my mom and my sister. What? I just killed my mom and my sister. You just killed your mother and your sister? How did you do that? Uh, I shot him with a, uh, 22 revolver. And what is your name? Jay Evans. Jay Evans? Jake Evans. Are you sure they're dead? Yes. Okay, do you, um, is there any reason that you were so angry at your mother and your sister? Uh, I don't know, I, uh, I wasn't, it's weird, I wasn't even really angry with them. It just kind of happened. I've been kind of, uh, planning on, uh, Killing for a while now. The the two of them, or just anybody? Pretty much anybody. In his four-page confession, Evans revealed that watching Rob Zombie's 2007 film Halloween that week was what triggered the events to go into play. 
While in court, Evans testified his actions with, I started watching Rob Zombie's Halloween. In the movie, a 12-year-old boy murders his stepfather, sister, and his sister's boyfriend. While watching it, I was amazed at how at ease the boy was during the murders and how little remorse he had afterward. I was thinking to myself, it would be the same for me when I kill someone. In 2015, Evans was sentenced to 45 years in prison with a minimum of 20 years served before being eligible for parole. Ever since, Evans has gone on record to state that it was his first and only murders and will never kill again, as the events that happened on that night will haunt him forever. I want to thank you for getting this far. If you enjoyed this episode of Realities of Horror, please leave a like and feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions you have for a future episode. Who knows, your idea may very well be the next episode. If you enjoy my content and wish to support me even further, please subscribe as I'm posting new videos every day until Halloween night and I would love for you to keep up to date and follow through with my spectacular. I'm Dr. Moxmo and I do wish you a happy but safe Halloween and I will see you next week with yet another episode of Realities of Horror. Until then, stay spookily fabulous everyone. <laughs>